And welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the United States, heart attacks and strokes. Is there anything that we can do to prevent that from happening? What can we do? And there are things that we can do. And we'll be spending most of this show talking about prevention of cardiovascular disease. Can that be done in your family? My guest is Dr. Josh Todd. Dr. Todd is a board certified cardiologist and he deals with this problem every single day. We'll see what we can learn. Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Overholt. I'll be your host for the next 30 minutes on The Dr. Bob Show. Later on, we'll be talking about that question I get so many times. I just can't get a good night's sleep. What can we do to get a good night's sleep? There are some things that we can do and we'll try and learn those. And then we'll talk about shin splints. What's a shin splint? What causes a shin splint? What can we do for a shin splint? Uh, there is treatment and there are things we can do. A lot of information for you. You'll want to stay tuned. We're talking with Dr. Josh Todd, and we're talking about cardiovascular disease, and we're going to be talking about what we can do to prevent that from occurring. Josh, welcome to the Dr. Bob Show. Thanks again for having me, Dr. Bob. I'm going to ask you the broadest question I've ever asked somebody. What is heart disease? Yeah, uh, extremely broad term, and, and there are several buckets that we can throw that into. Um, I, you know, I kind of liken it, try to simplify it. We have your plumbing issues, which is your blocked arteries. You can have electrical issues with the heart as well. Um, there are valves that, that can have issues, and so valvular heart disease is an up and coming, and we've even got new technology on how to deal with that. And then there's diseases with the pumping chamber of the heart. So all four are the, are the main things that we see that involve the heart. And it's amazing every five years how much cardiology has advanced and how much everybody's practice has advanced. I think the main underlying root of heart disease, or a lot of it, is hardening of the arteries. What do we call that? Yeah, so there's, there's arterial, arterial sclerosis, which is the calcification, uh -huh. and then there's atherosclerosis, which is uh, both calcification and buildup of cholesterol plaque into the uh, walls of the arteries as well. So if you've got atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, mm -hmm. what does a plaque look like? A hardening of the artery, cholesterol plaque. Right, I, you know, the simplest form, if you think of it as a newborn baby, maybe your, your arteries look like a very thin PVC pipe. As we get older, they start to look like a donut, where the hole gets smaller and smaller and we start to get some uh, buildup. That plaque, um, as we talked earlier, it kind of looks like the, the topping of a cheese pizza. So it just kind of sits on top of that artery um, and starts to narrow it over time. And so it builds up on the inside of the Correct. artery and makes it more narrow so you can't get as good blood supply to where that artery wants to send it. Um, can we prevent, uh, are there risk factors for people that get atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries? What can we? What can we do for those? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, the majority of it, and, and especially in this area, is genetic. You know, probably 60% of, of what we um, have in terms of your cardiovascular risk um, is inherited from mom and dad. Can't do much about that. But the other portion of it, certainly, um, you know, m most people know about, you know, e eating well, and we'll get into that. Um, exercise, um, certain habits not to do, um, and then control of uh, the risk factors that we develop when we get older and, and staying on top of those as well. So if somebody, I want to take two age groups, uh, an age group that knows they've already got some hardening of the artery issues mm -hmm. and people that are younger and don't have yet, are there the same things you tell these people to do? If somebody's already got it, is it too late? No, not too late at all. Um, we are more aggressive with the medical therapy on those patients. Um, I, you know, the, the younger person, we focus more on um, in terms of preventative cardiology on uh, dietary modification and, and not, not smoking. 
checking for diabetes, monitoring your blood pressure. And then as people age, when they start to collect these risk factors, such as diabetes and hypertension, then we start modifying that once you have accumulated enough risk factors. So let's talk about some of those risk factors individually. High blood pressure, is that a risk? Of course, yeah. And been. why is that a risk to the heart? It's high yeah, blood it, pressure. It, it, yeah, it, it's high. Hypertension's a risk to a lot of organs. I, I kind of liken it to um, driving your car down the road in fourth gear. You can do it for a while, but eventually the, the engine will start to wear out. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the hypertension control is never a sprint. It's always a marathon. We protect you five and ten years. Um, and so when the, the heart has to pump against high pressures over a period of time, um, those high pressures damaged all the, the vascular uh, the vasculature, the tubes that that high pressure is carried, and additionally the heart muscle can fail over time if we have uncontrolled hypertension. Yeah, so we sometimes take our heart for granted because it just beats by itself and does such a great job, but if it's beating against high blood pressure, it eventually weakens. Is that, would that be correct? It, it certainly can, um, but again, it's all the other risk factors that hypertension put, put you. Smoking? Uh, uh, smoking is a definite no-no. I mean, it's. Uh, Why is that? What does smoking do well, to the so heart? Well, the, the, and it, 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 again, it's the vasculature. So smoking causes probably a chronic inflammatory effect in your microvasculature and, and in your blood vessels. So uh, the cholesterol, a stable cholesterol plaque, you can live for a long time with it. When it starts to grow, starts to narrow quickly, or it becomes inflamed and ruptures, that's when we start having these sudden heart attacks, sudden strokes. So when somebody, that, somebody smoking, it damages the inside of the blood vessel and makes the cholesterol plaque more easy to yeah. deposit? Yes. Let's go to diabetes. Um, okay. We see more and more people that are obese, mm -hmm. and with obesity, sometimes they end up getting type 2 diabetes or people get type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm. Why is that a danger to the heart? Um, so again, the, uh, all of the small blood vessels, we call them microvasculature, and they, they give your, your heart muscle blood flow, your brain, um, and diabetes attacks all the tiny blood vessels in your body. So again, it's a multi-system uh, problem uh, disease process that can affect the kidneys and the brain and the heart. And people with diabetes have more vascular inflammation, they have more blockage, they accumulate more of these plaques everywhere in their body. I remember a cardiologist, a good friend of ours, George Kreisel, once said, that's a wake-up call when you get type 2 diabetes oh, right. as far as your heart goes mm -hmm. because of the things that can go, that can go wrong that way. Right. Let's talk about exercise. Mm -hmm. we, everybody, we always say exercise is so good for... Why is it right. good for the heart? I would think if the heart, you exercise, the heart's got to work harder. Yeah, I mean, if we look at what, what guidelines say for the minimum amount for uh -huh. heart healthy, look uh -huh. at the data. It says 150 minutes a week um, of moderate activity. Moderate activity is walking. Even ballroom dancing is considered moderate activity. Um, vigorous activity, running 75 minutes a, a minute, sorry, 75 minutes a week minimum. Um, and and you know, even if you can give yourself 15 minutes um, a day, 75 minutes minimum a moderate, that's enough to reduce your risk of having cardiovascular disease. And it's really pretty simple. I just mm -hmm. tell people, get your tennis shoes out and start using them. It is. So uh, you can walk anywhere with a friend. Is it better to work, walk with a friend or in a gym or at a track? I think wherever you can do it regularly um, is the most important. If having friendships is important to go do that, I think uh, you know in, in, any place is good as long as it's moving. So if somebody is a, a couch potato, what does that end? I mean, they're sitting down a lot. They're not yeah. exercising. They're not mm -hmm. getting their activity. What does that do to the blood vessels and promoting heart disease? Yeah, the, I mean, w certainly with it, as much data as we have on exercise, there can be regression of disease. So if you've built cholesterol plaque, exercise will make that uh, plaque reduce in terms of volume. I also kind of liken it to, to a check engine light. If you're sitting on a couch, you can get pretty severe coronary disease and not know it. So if you park the car in the garage, check engine light's not gonna go off. So again, getting out and moving will allow us as cardiologists to know when you're starting to become symptomatic so we can do something about it as well. Uh, genetics, male, uh, men versus women, is there a difference in heart uh, disease? Ma males are more likely due to testosterone to have early coronary disease. Females are protected by about 10 years later than their male counterparts. I've always heard that uh, so men get their heart disease earlier, but women, when they get it, it may be more severe. It is, yeah, usually later And they on. get a different type of chest pain. Do, do we do. understand why that is? No, I, you know, it, I, I also think that maybe we are getting them older. Um, and so, and, and sometimes, again, as you said, it is more severe. But I often see with women, maybe it's more just shortness of breath when they exert rather than the typical squeezing sensation radiating to neck and jaw. Sometimes I, I've had a couple of heart attacks 
effects just presented as nausea, so they just wow. and vomiting. So it's hard to tell. Um, I listen to chest pain stories all the time, and I still don't know the answer 100% of the time. Are there certain age groups that we need to pay more attention to? The real young, the middle aged, the older, any of those ages we need to spend more time with? Um, I, the, the probably 45 to 65 year old and is. That's it, what it, we're going to be talking about when we come back. Maybe the 45 to 60 year old. But mm -hmm. what about the uh, seven year old and the 15 year old and the 30 year old? A lot that we need to be doing at all ages. Uh, we'll be learning about that when we come back. We're talking with Dr. Josh Todd, board certified cardiologist, and we're talking about preventing heart disease. Hypertension puts you at risk. We can work on that cholesterol elevation. Uh, we can work on that activity wise. We can work on that. There's so many things that we can do to improve our health to prevent getting heart disease. Now we started talking about age groups and you mentioned really 45 to 60 is a time where people have changed some of their habits and they start finding out they've got diseased vessels. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to the really young, the preschool age. Yeah. What do you tell preschool age children, their mothers, their right. parents? I, again, good habits are, I think, it, extremely important to build at a young age. Um, the uh, amount of carbohydrates we have transitioned to um, as, as in the U.S., I think, has uh, contributed. Easy food, such as going to fast food restaurants, yeah. prepackaged things. All of those things, I, I do think, build a um, unhealthy eating habits long term. So um, I think giving children healthy choices at home is certainly important um, of lean proteins and yogurts and focusing on vegetables versus let's go to McDonald's. Yeah, I think <laughs> if you put those things out for children, apples and fruits, mm -hmm. you know, they really will go to that if you teach them to do that. Right. But certainly there's something that sometimes we're marketed to get uh, certain types of chips and, and that type of situations that have a lot of bad things for young children. Mm -hmm. So what do you do about their activity at an early age, at age four and five? Right, I, you know, the, the, the devices, um, I think, have, have entered in everybody's phase of life, my children included. Um, but, you know, it's, it's trying to convince them to get outside. It, it's, it's really rare now that kids are all the time out running around playing like they did 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, I think so you, 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 you got to encourage them. If you give children a stick and a puddle, they'll find a game <laughs> right. and something to play and they'll, yeah. have, they'll have a great time. Mm -hmm. Teenagers? Yeah, you know, teenagers, um, again, because they have the ability to move around on their own and make decisions, that's where, again, I think instilling healthy habits with, uh, with them as young children so that when they do go out to places with their friends, they're able to make appropriate choices. Team sports, I think, are excellent ways to motivate uh, and, and exercise. Um, and then certainly in, in the teenagers, uh, you know, the, the preaching of not smoking, don't, don't pick up that first cigarette. Yeah, I, I, that's such a hard thing because it seems like uh, cigarette companies mm -hmm. uh, encourage certain areas at teenage years for mm -hmm. people, to, oh, certainly. people to smoke. And I think it's up to the parents to say, no, right. you can't smoke, period, mm -hmm. in the report. I think children like that type of attitude mm -hmm. if you approach them properly. So cigarette smoking there, uh, again, eating foods that, let's talk about fats now and cholesterol mm -hmm. foods. Let's talk about saturated, unsaturated trans fats. Where does that fit? Right, so you know the the healthy natural fats that we get. So fish provide an excellent type of uh, oil that that's very healthy. Olive oil does as well. So all of these saturated fats, and you can read the back of labels, um, and they're usually again the prepackaged the uh, the foods, the um, processed foods, all have the saturated fat. So it is getting more towards omega oils if you're going to do it, um, and and try to um, again p pick. Pick something that's going to fill you up but without having the, the, the calories associated with it. So again, that's where vegetables come into play. And put snacks in the kitchen that people mm -hmm. can eat and enjoy. Right. Uh, cut up apple or some pineapple or some fruit of some kind. Correct. Um, Activity-wise, if somebody is not gifted in athletics, mm -hmm. uh, how do you encourage that child who suddenly becomes more sedentary mm -hmm. to be active? Well, you know, exercise is good for all groups. Um, I think. Uh, 
time-wise, um, certainly as, as I've been home during the, the pandemic uh, era, is that walking out with, uh, just get out and walking with your family. So we, we'd take the kids and say, hey, we're gonna go on for a 30 minute walk. Right. So I think if the parents can get involved, one, you spend time with your kids, two, you're both exercising, it's good for everybody involved. So um, it doesn't have to be running 10 miles. It doesn't have to go on a 50 mile bike ride. Just get out and do something for 30 minutes. Parents, 40 year olds, 45 year olds, there's a lot of stress in life that goes mm -hmm. along with, with providing for your family and for making sure that everybody's safe. And that stress, does, that, does stress have something to do with heart disease and uh, hardening of the arteries? Certainly, the, um, you know, you look at a type A personality, but um, th they have higher risk of cardiovascular events. And it's probably due to cortisol levels. As we get stressed, our adrenal glands secrete cortisol and other steroids. That in turn can give you a, a you know, arterial inflammation. So it's all this hormone release and this fight or flight you know, uh, t t type response that causes progressive atherosclerosis. So absolutely, stress is harder to combat than eating and, and uh, sure, exercise it's hard, though. it's hard to tell somebody to relax. However, mm -hmm. if we identify what our stresses are and we work on those, then there are things that we can do. Mm -hmm. So if people that at this age, they're getting their blood pressure, uh, they're looking at their weight, they're looking at their cholesterol, more mm -hmm. so at age 45 than they did earlier, mm -hmm. not necessarily meaning they shouldn't check it earlier. But if they find these things are abnormal, mm -hmm. what's the doctor's responsibility with the patient? Yeah, we've, um, at least in cardiology, we've moved away from routine testing. Um, cardiovascular testing, unlike cancer screening for you know colonoscopies and mammograms, hasn't really shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular events. It's focusing, um, you know, in, in terms of our cholesterol guidelines, we have lots of risk factors that go into an equation that say, hey, what's your risk in the next 10 years of developing a heart attack? And that's age and cholesterol levels, blood pressure, do you smoke, do you have diabetes? So all of those factors go into, hey, what are we gonna do, you know, right now to prevent you from having a heart attack? And those things we can control all Certainly. of those things are mm -hmm. active. So if somebody's got some hardening of the arteries, mm -hmm. how does turning the leaf around and um, exercising more and eating properly, what does that do? Can it take the cholesterol plaque away? Yeah, I mean, it, it, everything we do drops, you know, if you look at all the studies, it's probably about a 20, 30% reduction in doing things. So exercise will get you a 20, 30% reduction, whatever your risk was before. Eating healthy, taking a statin, um, you know, a, a, uh, blood pressure control, diabetes control. So it's all an additive effect. Um, there's not one individual thing that's really better than another. So it looks to me at that time in somebody's life, for sure, they ought to have a regular interaction with their physician who guides the things that are wrong with that person toward improving their life. Uh, right. What about in age 60 to 70, uh, when people are becoming less active, uh, joint problems, mm -hmm. that type. What do you tell those people as far as staying healthy? Yeah, that gets a little harder. Um, you know, we, we have uh, post heart attack, we have cardiac rehab, silver sneakers, I certainly think is, is something good that they yeah. can get involved with. If you have access to a pool, that alleviates a lot of joint issues. Um, but again, I mean, your goal is to do something for 30 minutes, five times a week, however you can do it. And if it's a recumbent bike or yoga or, you know, some type of class you can take, do it. And I think artificial intelligence, I think mm -hmm. the watches that we have, right. I think there's so many things out there that can encourage us to do something, to be active, to eat property, to, to read labels, to make sure that you're eating less uh, amounts of food and also mm -hmm. better choices of food. Right. All that sort of fits together, mm -hmm. uh, getting good sleep, sleep improve heart health. Yes, it does. Now, the, the, the trials, they've looked at that. Seven to nine hours seems to be the sweet spot. With everything else, there's a J-shaped curve. So um, less than seven hours is, uh, is actually worse than getting more than nine hours. So if you're going to pick something, it's seven, hour, seven to nine is good. Then you should sleep longer. And then the worst for your heart health is to sleep less than seven hours. There's a lot of things that we can do to, to uh, keep, prevent uh, mm -hmm. getting heart disease and having heart attacks and strokes. Mm -hmm. Josh Todd, thank you for coming and taking the time to tell us that it can be done and it's a simple thing and it's lifestyle changes. It's what you want to be out of yourself. And so don't smoke, uh, get the sleep, get the exercise, get the nutrition and stay healthy, stay happy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to the Dr. Bob Show. Thanks again. A lot of good basic information. Pay attention to all that. Change your life if you need to. 
because there's never a time where you can't change us. Never too early to start, never too late to start. So you want to be sure that you stay healthy uh, so you won't be one of the statistics on cardiovascular disease. Now you're going to want to stay tuned. We'll be talking about how to get that good night's sleep and what are shin splints and what can we do for those. A lot of information for you. I want to thank Dr. Josh Todd, wonderful discussion on prevention of heart disease. It's a daily task for you and I to stay healthy, so do a good job, follow his instructions. Now questions from you, the viewer, that I think will be important to your health. Question number one, Dr. Bob, I just can't get a good night's sleep. Do you have any suggestions? Well. Not a problem that just you have. Millions of Americans don't get a good night's sleep. They don't feel like they're well rested in the morning. They either can't get to sleep or when they go to sleep, they wake up and they can't go back to sleep and they don't feel rested in the morning. Uh, that's why there's so many mattresses out there to try and get you a good night's sleep. That's why there's so many different type of pillows to get you a good night's sleep. That's why there's so much instructions on how to sleep, but let's talk about what we need to do. Number one, you need to learn to go to sleep at the same time every night, uh, no matter what's going on. So set a time, 10 o'clock, 10.30, 9.30, whatever time is best for you. But make it where you go to sleep at that same time. It doesn't have to be on the second, but it has to be within 30 minutes. You'll do better if you know that you're going to go to bed at 9.30 or 10 o'clock. A couple hours before you go to sleep. Be sure you don't eat for two hours before you go to sleep. Don't eat a big meal at the end of the, de uh, end of the day. Don't have a lot of food in your stomach. Begin to p prepare. Uh, begin to cut down on the television and the stimulation that you have uh, from 7 o'clock to 9 or from 8 o'clock until 10. So begin to slow down a little bit, relax a little bit. Say, well, it's a good time to uh, maybe go take a bath or a shower or rest a little bit or listen to some music or read a book that you want, something that you enjoy doing. Don't go to that computer and start letting your brain uh, stimulate itself as far as what you're going to be doing the next day. So we slow down. Uh, bedroom should be quiet, should be dark, should not have the television there. It should be for sleeping. It should be a quiet room, should be a restful room. The covers that you have should be that which give you the warmth that you want. But the bedroom should be cool. We sleep better if the room is cool. So have your nighttime temperature, 68 if you've got air conditioning where you can do that and you'll find that you'll begin to sleep a little bit better. Think about sleeping well. Think about something you enjoy. Think about something that helps you rest. Think about a time where the life is just sort of floating in front of you. Now, before you go to bed, understand what medicines you've got. Avoid alcohol before you go to bed. Avoid nicotine caffeine before you go to bed. Those are all central nervous system stimulants and they'll keep you awake during the night. So now we've prepared ourselves to where we can sleep good. Know that if we wake up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, our brain still puts us in a fog where if we go to the bathroom, we can come back. We're still in a rest mood. Set your alarm where you wake up at the same time. So if you go to bed at 10 o'clock and you wake up at six, that's eight hours of sleep. That's a lot of sleep, that's good sleep. And if you can rest during that period of time, you'll feel better that day, you'll be happier, you'll perform better, the people around you will be better. So know that sleep is really important. Aches and pains and nervousness are all things that can interfere. Certain diseases like heartburn, reflux disease, so you have to, if you're not sleeping well, talk it over with your doctor and talk about the illnesses that you have. Uh, question number two, Dr. Bob, what are shin splints? Well, shin splints are where the shin is. That's below the knee and above the ankle. That's where the shin is. That's the tibia is the bone that's there. And sometimes runners with too much activity, uh, the muscles or the tendons or the blood supply to that area becomes inadequate and we begin to have 
pain. It's a way the body has of saying, oh, slow down a little bit. So that's how we treat that. We treat that with rest, elevation, ice, and not doing exercise for a period of time. Doesn't get better that way. You may have to see your doctor, orthopedic doctor. He'll make sure your blood supply in that area is good. And usually a tincture of time, a little rest, and you'll get rid of those shin splints. It's all the time that we have for this show. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Remember those four things. Exercise, important for your heart, important for your blood pressure, important for stress, makes you feel better. It'll help you lose weight. It helps you uh, have a runner's high. There are areas in the brain that pop up when we run. They're pleasure sites. And so running is a pleasure for people. It makes you want to do it again the next day. day. Get your seven to nine hours of sleep. We say seven and a half hours sleep, different ages, different people need different amounts of sleep, but don't think you don't need sleep. It will be a harmful or chronic effect on your health if you don't get adequate sleep. Nutrition, Mediterranean diet, DASH diet, diet against systolic hypertension. It's really low salt plus Mediterranean. Eat more fruits, more vegetables, more fish and fish that are oily fish. And when you eat those, you'll find that your body begins to improve its health, your blood pressure uh, and your relax. Most of all, what do we want? You know, it's that laughter in your life. Socialize, have fun, enjoy yourself, laugh, giggle a lot, smile a lot. And when you do, you'll be healthier.